And as for Ireland, who go to Parma in two weeks' time, Fiona, what can we say about Italy based on a decent showing against France in round one? Admittedly, France weren't at their best. And then what we saw today... Yeah, just look, this Italian team, I think Ireland can take heart that sometimes they overplay it. And if Ireland can put pressure on them, especially when they're on that kind of, when Italy are, are attacking and they're inside in the 22, um, they pull, they throw out those offloads, they do different things and they haven't been working, but they can be dangerous. But I think it's up to Ireland to look at that. And we saw an improved line speed last week. If they can get that even better up to scratch and put severe pressure under Italy, you can see they don't like the pressure. They didn't like England coming at them. Um, but for Ireland to dominate when they turn over that ball, they've got to come up with scores at the end. So I think Ireland have two weeks now to focus on that attack and especially that counter-attack, I think. Yeah. So, Grace, are we seeing this as very much uh, Wales third in the pecking order, but still quite a gap to France and England and England ahead of France? England are ahead of France, yeah. I think just because of the depth of their squad, the players that could come back into that English team, you know, there is a lot of changes uh, with that French team and they're not quite a full strength. Um, so I definitely think England have a lot more dynamic play. You know, they're very physical. They've seen the amount of turnovers. They did a lot of damage on turnovers today. They got the ball off Italy, whether from a scrum, a penalty, a rip in the contact. We see Marley Packer do that. And then they move the ball and they just keep that tempo so high. So I, I definitely think England ahead of France and then Wales. Yeah, they're they're, they're that third place right now. And, and when you see Italy there give away that score, it's going to be make for a really interesting game next week. Will Perfect. Wales give Will Wales give France a game? No, they haven't closed the gap that much. No, I don't think so. Um, you know, we looked last week, you might have thought maybe because of that French performance last week, but we just saw what they can do when they came to Ireland. When they're annoyed, they, they grouped together. They had a red card in that game and they were still able to come up with the big scores. And I just feel like France and England are so clinical. Mm. Counter-attack inside the 22. And that's where the other teams are definitely behind them because... As we said, look at a high scoring games. It's every time they get in there, they're coming away with points. And that's what the other teams haven't the ability to do that. Be it France and England have great pressure and line speed and they're coming up and killing off teams. But, you know, I we're, we're talking about Ireland. I think we'll get a huge sense of where they're actually at next week. Yes. I know it's away to Parma. Yeah. It's going to be a huge task, but they'll have to park the first two games and then we'll see how much have they come on or what have they fixed because it's it's going to be a better balanced game, we would hope. Yes, and I, I, a final thought, and it's a negative one, sorry, but <laughs> this group don't want a wooden spoon on their CV. It's been a long time since Ireland have taken the wooden spoon. I was about to say won the wooden spoon. I'm not sure that's the terminology. <laughs> and it's going to be a real grit match. You know, Italy will be hurting after their two losses. Ireland are really hurting as well. So they're both, it's kind of going to be an even keel to obviously Italy have the home advantage. Mm. Um, but both teams really want to put that performance in and get a win under their belt.